All right, good morning, everyone. So in this video, we're just going to go through how to solve the free fall calculation questions in this uh, module and more book. So open your books to page 42. We're going to take a look at Chonto 10 and Tugasan 3. Now, I'm just going to move my face out of the way here. Okay, But before we jump into how to solve the questions, um, in fact, I'll just show you the questions right now. And you can see this is uh, the question about um, how where they want you to calculate stuff like the speed and the time taken when you drop a stone from a building. And if you're wondering how to solve the questions, I'm just going to go back to the blank slide here so that I can scribble. For these particular questions, you need to use the linear motion formula. Now, if you recall the linear motion formula, there are four of those. I'm just going to write them out now. The first one is the acceleration formula, which is A equals V minus U over T. And the second one is the displacement formula, which is S equals half U plus VT. The other two, I'm just going to change color for fun, um, are the derived formula from these two, which are V squared equals U squared plus 2AS and S equals UT plus half AT squared. Now you can use any of these four formula in the following questions, which we're going to learn to solve together. But um, just to remind you that if you need to figure out which formula to use, please check what information the question has given and figure out the correct formula to use in this case. Before we go into solving the question, though, uh, there's some things that you need to be aware of when it comes to free fall. So free fall is a concept where an object, imagine this is an object, I'm just going to put color color here just for fun. Um, it's when you um, allow the object to fall with gravitational acceleration. For example, if you just take an object and you drop it, whoops, yeah, um, it's falling with gravitational acceleration, right? So gravity is making it fall, which means that it's falling with gravitational acceleration. Now, in all of these equations, you find that A recurs very often. And if you remember, A is acceleration, right? So in this case, because the object is falling due to gravity, the acceleration at which it's falling is equal to the gravitational acceleration. Now, the gravitational acceleration value, which I'm going to write on top here, it's usually expressed as G. The value of G is 9.81 meters per second squared. So in all of these equations, if you had to solve the calculation for this kind of question when an object is being dropped. The acceleration would be equal to the gravitational acceleration, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Also, before we solve all the questions, remember what each of these symbols represents. I'm just going to write here really briefly. So A, oops, I can't see it, right? Okay, so A, uh, let me just make this a little bit bigger. Okay, A is acceleration, right? Um, U and V are both velocities. Remember, U comes before V, therefore U is initial velocity. V is final velocity. T is, of course, time. And S is not speed, all right? S is displacement. Please don't forget all the units as well for each of these. Acceleration is meters per second squared. Uh, I'll write the number... I'll write that in a moment because, you know, Jamboard doesn't allow me to do subscripts or superscripts in this case. Okay. Find a second and displacement is in meters. So remember that acceleration whoops, is negative 2, while velocity, because it's similar to speed, they're all negative 1. So I'm going to go through now with you how to solve Chonto. 10. So we have a situation where a stone is dropped from a three-story building with a height of 15 meters. And um, in this case, the gravitational acceleration is given as 9.8. So although the more accurate value is 9.81, if the question gives you 9.8, you follow what the question gives. All right. So the question asks for the speed of the stone just before it strikes the ground. Now, what do they mean when they say just before, the, before it strikes the ground? It means this. Again, now I'm drawing a stone here. Imagine that we've dropped this uh, stone from a tall building, in this case, 15 meters. So I'm just drawing, imagine this is the building, right? So it's like, okay, the stone is being dropped. So you drop the stone. Okay, so 
Um, why do you say the speed of the stone just before it strikes the ground? Because if you drop the stone and it strikes the ground, what speed is the stone when it strikes the ground? Zero, right? So there's nothing to calculate. That's why they will never ask you the speed of the stone when it strikes the ground. Now, why it says before it strikes? Because rem remember that acceleration um, involves an increase in speed. So when you drop an object, it's actually increasing in speed. It's getting faster and faster and faster. Or um, as we have learned now, it is increasing in velocity. So as it gets closer to the ground, the velocity increases. So what happens is the velocity increases until just before it strikes the ground. Then there's a sudden change when it strikes the ground. So from a high velocity, it suddenly becomes zero. In this case, they want you to determine what is the speed or the velocity of the stone just before it strikes the ground, that maximum speed at which it has uh, achieved. How to solve? Let's look at what the question gives us. Height of 15 meters. So just now, right, look at the formula, okay, the uh, AUVTS, which symbol or which of these variables would be equal to the height. That's right. I'm just saying that's right. I'm assuming that you know. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you got it, good. Pat yourself on the back. Okay. Yeah, the height of 15 meters here would refer to the displacement. So I'm going to write it here. S is 15 meters. And a gravitational acceleration of 9.8, as already mentioned earlier, this is G, which means A. So A is equal to G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, if you're looking, you're like, oh, but I don't have enough information here, right? So what else do you have? Now, when you drop an object, just before you release, right, okay, you want to drop the object, what is the initial velocity? Yep, it's zero. So that means at the top of the movement over here, when you drop it, U equals to zero. So we have U as A. What are we looking for? Oh, as A, Woo. Okay, we have uh, USA, we're looking for, just before it strikes the ground, right, at the bottom here, that means you're looking for V. So, the formula you use in this case to solve the question involves V, A, S, U, which would be the third formula. V squared equals U squared plus 2A, S. So, now that you know the formula, solve it now, okay, um, I'm going to, of course, fill it in, but you can pause the video right now, work it out, and then continue the video and see whether you've got it right. So what I'll do now is I'm going to sub this in, 0 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 15. Okay, um, I don't have my calculator with me, so I'm going to pull up my computer calculator to work it out. So remember that if you're working this out, you can pause it right now and then replay, sorry, replay block, continue the play and uh, continue playing the video to find out uh, whether you've got it right. So you should get 294, which means that V would be 17.15 meters per second. So that's the answer. So now that you know how to solve this, then you should know how to calculate the time as well because now you have A, S, U, V, T. You can use any of the formula that involves T. So for example, you can take A equals V minus U over T. So again, pause the video here, work it out, and then continue uh, the video to check whether you've got the answer correct. So we have 9.8 equals 2. Now V, we already know it's 17.15. Um, U is 0. We're looking for T. So rearrange all these variables and you should get just using my calculator now. 0.75 seconds. And there you go. So when you have um, free fall situations like these, where you need to work out um, calculations like speed and velocity, time and all that, yes, you can use the linear motion formula as shown in the earlier slide. Just remember that the acceleration of the object as it falls downwards is 9.81 or follow the value that's given in the question. And other things you also need to figure out would be 
you know, stuff like this where um, you need to figure out the initial velocity, for example. Okay, so now that you are experts in solving uh, these kind of questions, that let's go on to solve the questions in uh, Tugasan 3. So here they're slightly different. And um, yes, we do need to understand how to solve these questions as well. And we just, we, I'm going to walk you through, through this as well. But um, if you like, again, pause the video if you want, try to figure this out and then um, continue playing the video to see if you're able to, um, you're able to get the correct answer. So we have uh, question one, an astronaut jumps from a height of 10 meters above the surface of the moon. So you don't need to do this, but I am so that um, hopefully it helps you, some of you visualize the answer. So let's say this white ball is the astronaut. He's jumping, right? So he jumps from a height of 10 meters from above the surface of the moon. So let's say the surface of the moon is uh, here, right? Okay, so let's say surface of the moon. So that's the astronaut, he's jumping. And they want you to figure out the time taken for him to reach the surface of the moon. I said him, it could be a her, right? That's, okay, so yeah, so the or, whichever, him slash her. So anyway, height. Uh, so just like uh, before, this height of 10 meters is the displacement. So S equals 10 meters, we're looking for um, unknown time. So I'll put T as question mark. And uh, acceleration this time is not 9.8. Why? Because it's the moon. And they've given here that is 1.6. So the acceleration of the moon, sorry, acceleration of the astronaut is equal to the gravitational acceleration of the moon, which is 1.6 meters per second squared. What else do we need? Jumping from, right? That means the initial velocity is zero. So I'll write here, u equals zero. From here, I think you can already see, oh, you can use the formula of S equals UT plus half AT squared. So if this is zero, I'm just going to put zero here okay? because zero times whatever is still zero. So we'll just leave it as zero. Half of 1.6 unknown T squared, S of course is 10. So from here, we can work it out. So you should uh, bring over the half and 1.6 to the other side and you can solve T. I'm going to use my calculator right now. So that would be 10 times 2 divided by 1.6. And we're going to square root that, giving us 3.54 seconds. Ta-da! Okay. okay, question 2 is a little bit different because now the stone is being thrown upwards. So this is where now you need to be aware that it's the opposite direction to the gravitational acceleration. So now we're going to throw this stone upwards instead. So when we're throwing the stone upwards, oops, straight, let's try that again. <laughs> Why is it not straight? Okay, so we're throwing the stone upwards, which means that now it's going against gravitational acceleration. Gravitational acceleration is still, uh, what we call it, it's still acting downwards. That doesn't change, right? So the value of G, now they're giving given it to us as 9.8. Um, if you're seeing 9, 9 per kilogram, what am I saying? Newton per kilogram or meters per second squared. If you're wondering why they're different, put it on one side first. We will cover this particular unit when we learn about uh, topic 2.3. Um, in the meantime, let's just take it as 9.8 meters per second squared. All right. Okay. So now it's thrown upwards with an initial velocity of 10, which means that now u equals to 10 meters per second. And they want us to uh, determine the time taken for the stone to fall back to its initial position. So what happens is when we throw an object upwards, it's going to go up and it falls back down. Correct? There's actually two motions in this case. So, um, if you're wondering how to solve it, you must be aware that there are two linear motions here one straight up and one straight down. You cannot calculate both at the same time. You need to split into two uh, different motions because they're each, they each have their own values. Meaning here, when you throw an object upwards, I'll just write the value here, u equals zero. What happens, eh, u is zero, sorry, u equals to 10. Now what happens is as an object moves upwards, you'll find that it slows down, right? It slows down and it stops at the top before it falls back down, which means that for the first motion when it's going up, where it reaches the top, v equals to zero. So that's the first motion. Now, I say first and second because after that, when it falls back down, so I'm just going to draw another arrow here, the values have changed because this time, 
this second motion now, its initial velocity is zero, and v, if you don't know, never mind. Um, it's quite lot. It's not never mind. What am I saying? It's more like it's a logical thing because when it travels upwards, it takes the same amount of time for it to travel back downwards. The same, for for the same motion. So you just need to calculate the time for one of it, and you can uh, just times two for the second motion, if you know what I mean. Because how much time it takes for an object to move up will be the same time for it to come back down to the same position. So how to solve this? U is 10, V is 0. This time, acceleration is not 9.8. It's moving against gravity, opposite direction. Therefore, acceleration is negative 9.8 because it's decelerating. It's slowing down as it moves upwards. We're looking for time. So you see UVAT, you can use the formula of A equals V minus U over T. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. So you'll have negative 9.8 equals to 0 minus 10 divided by T. If you work it out, okay, you will end up getting a positive value. So I'm going to take 10 divided by 9.8, giving us 1.02 seconds. Now, remember, this is not the final answer. It's only the time for the first motion. So when the object falls, it also falls with 1.02 seconds. Therefore, the total time is... 1.02 times 2, which gives us 2.04 seconds. This is the answer. Okay, so I hope that you now understand how to solve these questions using linear motion formula. Just remember, basically, that um, when an object falls, it's falling with gravitational acceleration. So the value of A will be equal to G. If an object is being thrown upwards, it's moving against gravitational acceleration. Therefore, A will be the negative value of G. So I hope you found this video helpful and educational. If you like this video, remember to click like. Um, don't forget to subscribe for more lessons and uh, more explanations on how to solve the uh, workbook questions.